The first exercise is on the A string, be it a cello or on a violin, on the A string, I would like you to play the open A, you'll measure the length of the whole string, and you will do the fifth above. The fifth above an A is yeah, A, B, C, D, E, that's going to be the E, so you're going to find those two notes. So. For some people, and I'm sure many of you, if you've heard that interval again, we'll play the open A, and then we'll find, see if we can find where that E is, and then we're going to measure the whole string, and then the shorter that gave us the E, and then you will divide it out as I've seen there, you will get a different ratio. We can express the ratio either as a fraction or as a decimal, and we'll talk about that a little bit later when we come back. And then you can look for different intervals. So that would be the fifth is the top priority. What's the next most pleasing and important interval? Third. Is it? I would think it was a fourth, is it not? I don't know, whichever, you could do one of these. This is me, again, not as a musician. So fill in these, I'd say probably in this order. And if you can get to fill out the whole table, fine. We're going to give us all, uh, let's see what we can get done in about 10 minutes. So what do we need to do? We need to, oh, I didn't give you the second assignment. I'm sorry. First assignment, A string going from A to E. Second assignment. I'd like you to go on the D string, and on the D string play an F, and then you're going to somehow find also the fifth above that. What's the fifth above F? C. So it's F, G, A, B, C. So you're going to play the second assignment, second thing that I'm asking you to do, because I want you to show that in either case with exercise number one, going from A to E, and exercise number two going from F to C, they're both fifths. I want you to see if you get the same answer. You should. And then the third assignment that I'd like you to do is again on the A, back to the A string. I'd like you to go from C and then up. So do that right now. Uh, on the A string, the C, and then the up a fifth from there on the A string. Can you do that? Did that work? Okay, so three assignments. Let's see if we can do that, measure, and if you need a calculator, each group should have a calculator. We've compared two notes that are a fifth apart, and in either case, the ratio is about 1.5. Yes. That's what we wanted, right? Yeah. Okay, now let's investigate something different. We'll do the fourth. Okay, so we're on the A string now. Okay. We're going to measure a C. So does everyone see what we're doing now? Now we're doing a different interval. We're doing the fourth. So we're going from a C to an F, C, D, E, F, okay? So the C, uh, 57 and a half. so 57 and a half. Oh, so that was the, that's interesting because that was the same distance down as we did before, which makes sense, okay? And now, and that was, so again, what are we doing? Now we're checking what the ratio is going from a C to an F. That's a fourth, C, D, E, F. So we just got the C string length is 57 and a half, is that correct? Yes. These are centimeters, I said inches before. Now we're at uh, basically 43 and a scooch, 43 and a half. 43 and a half. We already spoke about the octave, and I'm going to write it down here both as fractions and decimals. And I think, I know two of the groups were working with decimals and one group was working with fractions, which is quite interesting. Um, so in terms of the groups, in terms of fifths, I think I saw 1.51. I think I saw 1.49. Is that about right? And so you can actually see that that number, 1.51, is approximately 3 divided by 2. And certainly, I think we know that it's only the whole idea of decimals are a fairly recent invention. And certainly in Pythagoras's time, it was represented as a ratio of 3 to 2. 3 divided by 2 is about 1.5. Um, what did we see for numbers for the fourth? I think I saw 1.32. What else? Yeah, 1.3. Just 1.3. Anything else? Yeah, four to three, but we had a, about 1.3. Okay. And if you do 4 divided by 3, that's going to produce, that's 1 and a third, which is 1.3 repeating, 1.333. 3, 3. 
And so we can see, and these are the ideal ratios that Pythagoras said, this is, defines what a fourth is. It's not, you know, 1.3 in a little bit. It's one, it's, it's, it's four to three. It's exact. To him, this was, this was given to us by God. This is, this is what defines beauty in the world of music, are these simple ratios. And the Pythagoreans went further than that. They said that much of the world, much of the world was, was put together by God with this mathematical law lawfulness through simple ratios like we're seeing here. And music was such a wonderful way for them to see that yes, this really does work. These simple ratios, it's the simplest ratio of all, two to one, three to two. Those are the most perfect intervals. Those are the ones that are most pleasing, very interesting. Um, did anyone get to the major third? What did we have there? Five to four. Five to four. Wow, you guys are that's impressive coming up with the fractions because sometimes it's hard to look at the decimals and know what it is. What did we come up with decimals here? 1.25. 1 Does that sound about right? Anybody else? Anything else? 1.2. A little bit off there. It could have been slightly off there. Um, okay. 1.28 did I hear? Okay. 1.2, 1 1.28. Uh, did anybody get to the major sixth? The sixth? 1.7. We have 1.63. 1.63. Anything else there? Um, so why don't we look at that one here, the major six. Okay. 1.65 for that. It, it, it's harder to hear these intervals, especially for those of us that are less well trained. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit as well. But actually, why don't I, I'm going to copy them all the way over to here now. These are the intervals that the Pythagoreans knew. This is really what it is. Now, I'm not sure. I say that with a little bit of hesitance because, to be honest, um, the second and the seventh, I think that probably would have been out of their reach in terms of, is that, is that correct, Kathleen? I mean, we're really getting, those wouldn't have been intervals that would have been common in their music at that point. Uh, but certainly the fifth, Absolutely three to two, the fourth, four to three. And what we see is when we go further, I would say these intervals become less and less, what is the word I'm looking for, pleasing? Is it um, harmonious, consonant. consonant? And they become more and more dissonant is what we really see. So the sixth um, is really the common one for that is five to three. What is that as a decimal? What is that as a decimal? It's going to be one and two thirds, so it's about 1.67. So that's very close to what we were seeing here. So that does make sense. Uh, the second, the most common ratio given for that is nine to eight. Um, nine to eight is very good. So you got all those right? That's, that's amazing, I have to say, you know, that you got the frat, you just nailed the fractions right there. That's really impressive. The major seventh, if we get into the seventh, you know, can you, can you just do that quickly, Shanti? Play two notes a seventh apart. Um, then we get into this idea. Now, if we look at this major, so if we look at this, the major seventh, the most common ratio, and again, this wouldn't be through the Pythagoreans, but they would certainly agree that if I play two notes, that is not as pretty of a ratio. It's not a simple ratio, is it? So they're expecting this to sound more dissonant. Play one uh, after the other, and together again. You feel that, don't you? And, and, this is, and this is, of course, getting out of my realm into the whole idea of the history of music and all this and how, and how over time those kind of intervals have somehow, has something changed within us so that now we now find intervals that a long time ago, we would have thought were just un were terrible. You know, in modern music now, you hear much more of this. And it's interesting how this has all changed and evolved. But that's a topic for another conversation, I think. Um, so let's, um, I'm going to keep this right here because we're going to refer back to this for other things. But I hope you found that interesting. You know, here it is. We've built up these ratios through our experience. 
you know, through looking for these notes on a string, measuring, and then calculating those ratios. And that, again, for the Pythagoreans, this would be fundamental. This is what really all of music needs to revolve around. And for a long time, that was true within the world of music. Within the world of music, this very much did define music. All these intervals were central. And it wasn't until very recently that we broke away from this fundamental truth. Again, the Pythagoreans would say, given to us by God, that we only recently broke away from this and felt the need to do something different. And so that's what I'm going to be presenting. Well, why was there a need to actually do something different? I'm really talking about a Western stream of music, but I would say I think the fifth would have to be found, I think, in any, in any stream of music. Yeah? So yeah, and, and I'm really tracking the, the Western stream of music for sure, the history of Western music. So um, what I'd now like to talk about is if we look at a, a note, for example, and if I say A440, I think most of us have heard this. Uh, most orchestras, uh, I believe in this country, would tune to A440. We hear this. And what does this really mean? It really is, it ought to be here. Uh, we should include this. This is Hertz. This is Hertz. And what this actually means is that the string, it's hard for us to imagine it, because when we see a string vibrate, what do you actually see? It just is a blur. And that string is vibrating if you play um, A4, and that's the A string on the violin. If Shanti, if you could do that um, really quickly here. The A string on the, vi on the violin is vibrating 440 times per second. Just open A. And so if you were able to look at that closely enough, you've all seen this, you know, it does, it appears blurry, but it's actually going back and forth 440 times every second. One more time. And what we know also is if we actually do it instead, sorry, I'm tangled up. Thank you. I'm being fixed now. So Shanti's going to come up here again, and now she's going to play the A. Um, and she's going to then play the octave higher on the A string. And so what's happening here? So it's vibrating open, 440, 440 times per second. And now it's vibrating more quickly. And this is the principle that I want to bring about now. And that is, as the, freak, as the pitch goes up, the frequency goes up with it. And so that what happens with the octave, we see, that means it's vibrating twice as quickly. So it's not vibrating 440 times per second, but it's actually 880 times per second. Every time you go up an octave, it's another, it's another. In fact, um, we can just keep it on a piano. You can just go, and every time you go up an octave on the piano, it's doubling it. And so the frequencies you get into with the highest notes on the piano are well, well up above 3,000, for instance. 3,000 vibrations back and forth that many times per second. It's, quite, it's hard for us to imagine, but that is sound, and that's how sound really works. 